What a lovely wall. Hi. In a move that seemed like it should have happened years ago, YouTube has officially started streaming movies from major studios for free on its platform. What? Can you believe it? So how? Why now? What movies? And wait, free movies on YouTube? Yes. What's the catch? And for some reason, they just now figured out what other streaming platforms like Vudu and Sony's Crackle have already been well aware of. You could totally stream movies to customers for free as long as you pay for the rights to stream them by putting ad breaks at various points, just like they do on TV. What a concept. Wow. So what's weird about this, though, is that there was no big announcement, no marketing effort, no pomp or circumstance to what is actually a pretty big deal for the platform and for people who might be cool with watching what's available and don't mind sitting through a couple of ads so they can watch it for free. Mm -hmm. uh, it was just quietly activated sometime within the past few weeks and the library is actually growing, signaling to us that this could actually become a hub for the vast amount of movies in the future. Uh, as long as the, the studios behind the film see a decent enough return from the YouTube ad supported option. So previously, if you had ever ventured over to the sidebar of YouTube where different categories and stuff like that is listed, uh, you would have seen a link for movies and shows. If you had no idea that this sidebar even existed, don't worry because we never really looked there either and primarily just used that sidebar for the My Subscriptions button on it, which is very conveniently located at the top. Mm -hmm. For now, at least. They keep making changes and one day it's just gonna be movies and shows up there and no subscriptions. Yeah. Uh, now, since launching the movies and shows category, it's always been a place for paid rentals of movies and shows, similar to the experience that you would find on something like Google Play, iTunes, or Amazon Prime with prices that are comparable to all of those services. In fact, it's literally just a uh, fake storefront for Google Play. It is, yeah. When you, <laughs> when you buy something on Google Play, it's pretty yeah. much a YouTube player. Yeah. Uh, but. As of last month, around 100 movies have been added to the page under a free to watch section. Hmm. Now, okay, how great these movies are or your excitement to actually watch any of their ad supported offerings, that's gonna depend entirely on your taste in movies. If you got bad taste, you are in luck. <laughs> Do you got bad enough taste to watch these free movies? Yeah. Uh, while some of it does resemble the $5 bargain bin at Walmart, soon to be a $2 bargain bin. Ooh. There are some gems, and these are films from major studios. Uh, there are some turds in there for sure, and some movies that we had no idea even existed and are probably awful. But instead of just listing out all the trash, we'll just tell you what they've got on there right now that's actually pretty great. Or at least great for reasons other than strictly top-notch filmmaking. Yeah, there's some fun. Uh, the original Terminator is on there. So if you've only seen the second one, now's the time. Mm -hmm. uh, there's Hackers. Oh shit! Biodome. Oh shit! Saved. That's a good one. Jesus Camp. Ooh. Zero Dreams of Sushi. Nice. And all of the Rocky franchise. That's not bad at all. I know. There's a bit more on there that is probably great. I don't know. I'm not aware of some of these movies. There's a there's a couple Jackie Chan movies on there that I haven't seen. It's always a pleasure. Uh, but again, that depends on your preference. Uh, two things that did stand out for us, though, were that uh, as far as we can tell, your YouTube Red or your YouTube Premium, that does, in fact, work on these movies. So if you do pay for YouTube in that way, you won't see any ads at all. That's it's great. basically just like a Netflix or something. Wow. Uh, the other standout is that uh, on the few movies that we checked, the comments section has been left wide open. <laughs> which is, that's actually pretty great. When it comes to 14 minutes. <laughs> you are not wrong. <laughs> it's actually pretty great when it comes to goofy shit, especially like Hackers and, and Biodome. And it, it, it already is, but the potential, once people start discovering this, mm -hmm. is that there will be some pretty funny conversations Again, once people become more aware of these movies, uh, and uh, we've already seen people doing timestamp comments on moments that, you know, you might have missed watching movies for the first time. Like, you know, little things that maybe didn't stand out uh, the first Boom time you watched shot. it. Oh, and uh, like Elliot said, yes. Yes, there is, there is tagging already for nudity uh, in the timestamps. Angelina's nips. That's exactly the one we're talking about. In in the hackers' comments, you can there's a link that goes directly to where her boobs show up. Yeah, so hey, with all the dumb shit that happens on this terrible platform from time to time, it's good to see that something cool can just sneak its way onto the platform and they don't even announce it. And uh, you know, yeah, hopefully this whole ad-supported movie streaming thing does well so that the potential for more and more offerings will grow. Yeah, if a ton of people are watching this shit and YouTube and the studios are making a ton of money, it would make a lot of sense to bring other stuff to it. Yeah. Hopefully it turns into a place with just nothing but awesome B-movies from the 90s. Yeah, I'd be, like, yes. 
Yes, yeah. please. Where's Encino Man, huh? Yeah, uh, the whole Poly Shore uh, yeah. catalog. Mm -hmm. But uh, hey, now since it's the first episode of the week and for whatever reason this episode has become a go-to for gaming news for us, let's touch on a few things that popped up over the weekend. Obviously, Fortnite, dab is uh, still one of the biggest games in the world. It's raking in an astronomical amount of money. And as we all know, since it's a free to play game, that money comes from microtransactions for things like skins and emotes or dances specifically. Now, as far as we know, it's probably pretty hard to copyright a specific dance like the floss. The hoot nanny, which one's that? Ding, 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 uh, ding. Or even classics such as the robot. But what if the, you were the person responsible for the popularity of a specific dance and then Fortnite used it to make a profit? Would you be honored or would you be upset and asking for some of that money? So we finally have the answer to that very specific question and to whether or not dance moves are protected by copyright thanks to two people who have had their moves digitized and sold in the game for a profit. First of all, according to all the articles that we've read, which include statements from lawyers who specialize in this type of stuff, you actually can't copyright a dance move, at least in the United States, which seems kind of odd and archaic, but that loophole is what allows a game like Fortnite to draw in a huge profit on these types of emotes with basically no overhead cost. Okay, but you, okay, so you can't copyright a dance move, but what if you just literally took like in a more fine art, uh, corner of dancing, you took a, let's say a brand new ballet performance in New York City, and you just took that and released it under a different name. No, I think, well, the visual representation of it would be copyright. But right, you, but you're having different performers perform yes, the exact- that would be fine. That's, that's a big old fucking loophole in our, uh, yeah, very archaic copyright see, system. See, it might be different with actual performances, but as far as it goes in, in gaming and virtual representation of this, the lawyers that uh, it was specifically CBS News talked to were like, yeah, no, this doesn't exist. I mean, it is, I guess, a slippery slope. It's like, I don't know, should you have to pay Michael Jackson every time you moonwalk? I, maybe, I feel I like know. he would have copyrighted that. Like, it, it's so oh, he weird. totally would. It's so weird. Like, it's I, the way I was thinking of it, too, is like, did they copyright the Macarena dance or just the song? They didn't need to because no one wanted it. Okay, well, it, it's very, <laughs> very confusing, but apparently this is... Fortnite is proving that it is, you don't even need to fucking do anything to put these dance moves in a All game right, and profit well, off of them. One of the first big dance emotes to emerge from Fortnite was strikingly similar to a dance that the character Turk, played by Donald Faison, did in the show Scrubs many moons ago. And it looks very similar because it's the exact same dance. And it's pretty fucking obvious that they had just literally copied it from the show's character, which was apparently, he says it was created on the spot during the filming of the episode. That's what Faison said, and that's impressive, yeah. Over the weekend at a comedy festival in Los Angeles, there was a Scrubs reunion, with a good portion of the original cast coming back together for a group performance and a Q&A session. During this Q&A, the topic of the Fortnite dance was brought up, and Faison did not mince his words. Now he started off, this whole thing started off as a request for him to actually do the poison dance. That girl is poison. See, we'll get, but, but. we'll get copyright struck for that, but not for a dance. I know. You gotta do the dance. Uh, anyways, the whole cast got around the idea and they attempted to get him to do it for the crowd, uh, to which he quickly responded, no, and then said, if you want to see it, you can play Fortnite because they jacked that shit. Uh, then Scrubs series creator Bill Lawrence went on to say that Fortnite, they did actually inquire the studio about using it, but that that was just a formality because it was just a character doing a dance and he basically insinuated that they could use it because he had no power to say no. Uh, Faison interrupted him to, to interject that I didn't get no money. That's what you're thinking though, right? Somebody got paid. No, I did not. Somebody stole that shit and it's not mine anymore. Fucked up. Yeah. The conversation continues uh, where the show creator jokes about spending all of their Fortnite money. And Faison keeps interrupting by basically saying, no, that's a joke. No one got money from that dance, but Fortnite. <laughs> In an attempt to make it clear that joking aside, they literally stole it and there was no recourse for getting money from it. Yeah, it was. it's kind of weird because he's like, they're like joking about it and how their kids like it and stuff. And he's like, no, no, no. I no, I didn't get paid for this, and no one did. I and Fortnite's making all the too. money. Like, yeah, it's just it it it. It's very strange. Yeah, and yeah, like I, I can see just you know, feeling violated. Yeah, at the very least, violated. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so it's obvious that despite the popularity of the dance, 
Faizan didn't seem too happy about the game profiting off of something that he created. And while he probably won't file any lawsuits against Epic for it, uh, another artist whose dance was added to Fortnite actually is looking into legal action against the company. Mm -hmm. Rapper 2 Millie. That's for short for $2 million. Mm -hmm. He has accused Fortnite of stealing his dance, the Millie Rock. And uh, he's apparently looking at any options available that might make a case against the company for doing so. So in an interview with CBS News where they say that the dance was re renamed Swipe It in the game despite being identical to the Millie Rock, the rapper says, Everybody was just like, yo, your dance is in the game. And he adds that they actually sell that particular move. It's for purchase. That's when I really was like, oh, no, nah, this can't go on too long. Uh, the person conducting the interview then asked, what would make it fair for you? With two milli responding, I don't even want to bash them for all the millions. Know what I'm saying? It's not really like that. I just feel like I have to protect what's mine. Yeah. And he's not wrong. Yeah. He feels violated. Yeah. Uh, but again, <laughs> this is going to be an uphill battle if he does decide to take legal action against Epic who, by the way, declined to comment on the CBS News report about this. They shut the fuck up. Probably smart. They got good lawyers over there. Mm. But if this did go to court, it could end up being a landmark case that changes the copyright law and things like this because it's just so blatantly obvious where Epic is getting the inspiration for the moves that they're turning a pretty massive profit on. Mm. This is gonna go to the Supreme Court. Probably. Ruth Bader Ginsburg, I don't know what any of this is, <laughs> but the dance. So yeah, it's Kavanaugh will know though. Kavanaugh, yeah. yeah. He's get, made a few moves back Kavanaugh in Kavanaugh definitely stole dance moves in college. Oh yeah, absolutely. He would go down, go down to the, the hip hop dorm, look through the windows. And they'd come back. And he'd be like. Show off all the new moves. Yeah, he's like, check this out. This is the Kavanaugh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They had no recourse back mm -hmm. then. But, so yeah, it'll be pretty interesting to see if this goes anywhere because all it would take is one successful suit against Epic for a dance. And it could all come toppling down, considering just how many of the dances in the game are directly inspired by artists and musicians. Yeah, there's a Snoop Dogg dance, there's a Psy from uh, Gangnam Style. So if one successfully even, like, gets a settlement, like out-of-court settlement, like, everyone is gonna jump on this, and then the law will probably be changed because of Fortnite. Yeah. Fortnite could affect copyright law, potentially through the Supreme Court, which is fucking insane. And just another example of the dumb, weird reality that we're living in. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, uh, I'm trying to get Elliot to play Fallout 76. I'm trying to get him to do what it. What if I just live stream myself burning $60 in cash? Wouldn't I feel like that would be more entertaining. <laughs> the news with Fallout 76 is, uh, first of all, there was a patch early Monday morning to fix things, hopefully. And uh, also, fix things. also uh, according to data that came out of uh, Europe again, because they release their sales right. numbers way for uh, way before America does. Uh, a lot of the comments that I was getting on stream and stuff like that were like, don't you think it's enabling companies like this for you to spend money and play this game? And I'm just like, well, I think that they'll probably see that sales will be down overall. So even if I'm playing the game and enjoying it, they probably didn't sell a couple extra because of the beta and stuff like that. And turns out, so far, that's fucking true because sales for Fallout 76 were over 80%, down over 80% from Fallout 4 back in 2015. Well, uh, the amount of effort is also down by over 80%. So, sounds like they're probably still making money. Listen, I'm having a fucking blast with it and I'm trying to get Elliot to buy it and, I'm, and I'm, I think it would be a hilarious stream for me and maybe Shibby or Kale to like get your character up to speed and just watch you experience the game. I, I think it would be great content. He thinks it's gonna be a big waste of time. You let us know in the comments section whether or not you think that's a big waste of time or not and maybe we'll schedule something soon because even the bugs are hilarious I, but i can just go on youtube and watch those nah and you, gotta, you gotta play it and i have i, I mean, really think that you would enjoy it i like the bug where uh there's one where somehow the uh entire global lighting got tied to the direction that the character was facing yeah so it was like he was like a giant flashlight like yeah. he became the sun there's also i've definitely experienced one where the god rays come through solid yeah, rock mountains <laughs> shooting up oh man yeah I watched, you're gonna you're gonna love it i watched like a 20 minute supercut of just Every streamer just finding weird glitches. I really think that you would, that you're gonna love the game. So uh, you let us know in the comments section. See, I, I I care about Fallout, and that's why and I feel disrespected. I feel like the franchise is being disrespected. Well, you know, you could help. You could just do. You could be like a bug reporter. No, those people deserve to be paid <laughs> and employed. Just like Donald Faison. Y'all are y'all are suckers. You're falling for your slave labor. Your slave laborers. You're paying for the privilege of testing a broken game. Well, now you can watch Elliot's frustrations with it, hopefully. Please let us know in the comments whether or not you want to see that and whether or not we should buy Elliot the, a copy of the game so we can do that. 
I already know what the answer is going to be. Anything that tortures Elliot is a thumbs up from everyone. Make him angry. This is supposed to be a holiday week. Make it, just fucking ruin it for him. Yeah, I want to get real hangry for Thursday. <laughs> mm. Mm. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go in with a big appetite. What should they watch, Elliot? Uh, they should watch Weekly Weird News. I believe the longest we've done possibly ever, but I think definitely on this channel. Mm-hmm. Uh, and yes, we answer the question about, or the com- constant stream of comments about, did you guys see this big dick toilet thing? That's the whole episode. Is yeah, well, the big dick that. toilet, and then Jared Threaten, and then a bunch of great headlines. It's, There's a, good a, bu- one. it's a great, it's great a good episode. One. And then also watch News Dump about how uh, Venom is going to get an uh, Oscar. No, no but, it's not. but just watch the. It's fun episode. to think about. Yeah, uh, <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you guys on that Fallout stream apparently someday. No, just, you won't. Yeah, look look on Twitter to see the times that we're going to go live with Elliot on Fallout. Mm-hmm. It's going to be great, and Kale's going to help. It's going to be a big reunion, just like the Scrubs reunion. They're going to steal all our dance moves. Bye.